Mr. Locke. I was hoping for a moment of a dime, sir. If you want an interview, get in line. You know the rules. I'm not here for an interview, sir. I represent Mr. Emir Ibrahimovic. You have done my people a great service. I've seen all the records, interviewed the doctors. Doctors are cheap. You saw the body. Ivan Novak is dead. I don't believe that. Neither do you. I could go in alone. Confirm his identity. And then what? Kidnap him, like the others? Spark a diplomatic incident? Dozvolite da vam predstavim našeg osnivača, doktora Jovana Petrovića. I know what it is to deceive myself. We deceive ourselves about the goodness of our nature. The state of our lives. I've been here for 48 hours. Evidence is required. Until one day the darkness bursts forth. Are they the same man? Are you the same man you were 25 years ago? Acknowledge that, and you've made the first step. Simon Foster here from Screen Watching. Uh, here Be Dragons is the story of a UN war crimes investigator who's given the opportunity to face his demons and forge some sort of justice by returning to Serbia in search of a war criminal. Alistair Newton Brown's debut feature stars the terrific Nathan Clark Sapsford, who joins us ahead of the film's home entertainment release via Defiant here in Australia and check with local distributors of quality cinema in other territories. Welcome to Screen Watching, Nathan. It's so good to talk to you. Oh, it's great to talk to you, mate. It's a lovely blog you've got there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's a very contemporary story, of course, but stylistically, Hebe Dragons is, it's also a very authentic throwback to the great international thrillers of the 70s and 80s, like Day of the Jackal or Gorky Park, those sort of films that, that I grew up yes. with. Yes. What was the... Job done. What was the mood board like for the shoot? What films did you and Alistair look at for inspiration? Well, uh, well, I uh, the mood board would have been a lot of um, The Third Man. Wow, great. Um, awesome Wells and, like, the references that you make. Um, you know, what? I mean, such an amazing palette in, in Belgrade in the winter because it's just, like, you know, these these gothic trees with no leaves on them and these like incredible socialist buildings. And yeah. um, I mean, you know, a forbidding sort of outside belies a very warm exterior of the place. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, the idea was to sort of make a, a, a noir film, a, a, a thriller, a classic, uh, as you're talking about, you know, the sort of thing that we would like to see in the past. And, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and then and then sort of have have like you know the the underneath the, the other things are trying to you know sort of bring up and, and create a bit of moral ambiguity and 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 that sort of thing. But yeah, that that was really it. You get to play a, a very damaged psyche as David. How did you approach physically manifesting this character's darkness? You give a very still, very focused performance. Yeah, that, I, it kind of was the idea. I and it's great that it translated. I, I felt a stillness would be really useful, and um, Alistair liked that too. And I think it was, um, you know, just really having it all going on behind the eyes. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, in terms of approaching it, it's it's just I just tried to do the best to that I could to serve David, who I thought you know is is trying his hardest to do. Um, to do something that's very important to him. I think it's a really tough job and a very lonely job. And, and uh, he um, has endured great loss and he shares something with the people of the region because he's lost what they have. So I think um, 
it was important to me to sort of try and understand the city to, you know, to be honest, it really, it all sort of came together for me when I put the coat on. <laughs> it's like Indy with his hat. I get it. Yep. A bit like that. I mean, you know, and like, you know, it depends. Different roles, like shoes can help. Or shoes weren't helping. I brought my own. Like, it was like, but something about that coat is, um, I mean, it was custom made for me by this amazing uh, Serbian seamstress who like, you know, just chain smoked and we're both chain smoking <laughs> balcony. She measured me up and spoke no English. And we just sort of, you know, with this deep throaty laugh and, She'd done a lot of opera. She'd done a lot of, uh, you know, kind of really extraordinary things. Wow. And um, in 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 the Balkans and in Europe and in Vienna and in the States and all of this. So uh, I don't know. Something about putting that on just went, oh, here we go. Like pop the pop the collar. Like here I am. This is the this is the armor. This is the you know. Yeah. Let's let's go do it. So. Alistair, he, he loves your eyebrow ridge. He loves this intense stare you have. There were long sequences of the film where you don't blink. In fact, it became a bit of an obsession of mine when I was watching it. There's a scene towards the end of the film when you're walking towards the meeting um, and you take a, a little branch in the face. You get some leaves in the face and mm. you don't blink. And I'm thinking, who takes a branch to the face and doesn't blink? This is extraordinary. This It's, it's a very intense performance. And congratulations on it, because I was completely hooked. Had a lot of Clive Owen to it to me as well. I thought there was a real sort of intensity that reminded me of, of Clive Owen's best work. Yeah. Oh God, I was just watching Children of Men again the other day. Wow. I was like, oh, God, he's God, he's good in that. God, that's a good film. Um, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the other thing was, like, Having me be the that person sort of enabled the other cast who are you know more um, the characters are a little bigger I suppose or uh, we certainly um, Slobo's character playing Petrovic playing um, Novak sort of it's like I don't know it sort of enabled them to dance a little bit on top of it I I thought sure. I guess you know just sort of he only he doesn't really say what he thinks David Locke like he does once in I think with the with the cops which I always loved loved that scene and I, when I read that it was like okay I get who he is and I, and I love that he doesn't really say what he's thinking and he's watching and he's an investigator and he doesn't react so um and just have him make up his mind you know and I, you know it's like hopefully it gets to the point where you're like is he thinking this is he thinking that is he hopefully it's I'm thinking and I'm not like dead eyes <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like there's a lot going on back there that's for sure um a lot of David's darkness descends upon him in that that prologue scene, of course, the, the opening sequence that depicts a tense um, and truly horrific moment. And the production comes up just shy of showing the full horror, but we get what's gone on here. Um, did Alistair draw on on a real life incident in his in his writing and depiction of that sequence, or any significant sequence in the film? Well, I've got to say, I, when we were showing the film at a screening here. Um, oh God! What's that? A man that that Alistair had talked to in uh, in preparation for it all. Who was who's a, who's who's a justice in in Canberra, and he uh, was um, a judge at the ICTY. Wow! And like he came up to me afterwards, and like without me asking, just because I was like, oh wow, you know. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, are we wrong? Are we right? Are we? But he 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 said no. Something like that would have happened. Wow. And uh, which just made it even more horrific. It just took me back to it, just you know, like a dump truck, like that. It's yeah, uh, you know. And sadly, you know, it's it's playing itself out today. You know, lessons haven't been learned. And you've got Europe again since first time since Balkans. You've got you know the Middle East. Like it's you know, so it's it's uh, hopefully it's something that speaks to people in a broader sense of um, uh, conflict zones and people in you know ideology ideology and nationalism and and um and you know like the, the real people who, who who lose everything and if they survive it they they're damaged forever so that i mean that raises an interesting point i guess you're working with actors like slobodan bestich and maria bergam and, and i imagine a lot of the crew who have directly or indirectly been impacted by these kind of events, uh, events upon which the the narrative is based, that's a lot of responsibility for two young Aussies to to take on in, in the middle of Serbia. Yeah, I mean, it could be daunting at times. Uh, 
you know, I mean, and, and it's sort of beyond that. It's sort of like realizing what a country, you know, it took me a while and then the penny dropped and it was like, oh, I mean, getting it just from a, an outsider, but like what it would be like growing up in a socialist environment in, in the former Yugoslavia. And, um, and then what it's like when all of a sudden you, um, you're thrown into a to you know a democracy overnight and like you had you know it's a completely different way of living. Mm. So, you know, which, which a lot of that region had to deal with. So I mean, I, I feel like I was um just really uh, privileged to be there to and to be let in, you know, and be educated by them in a in a soft way. I mean they're very but it's great. They sort of want to tell you a lot and then when you and then they, you know, you sort of, it's hard to get a word in. And then when you just go, right, enough, this is something, you know, on the human side. Mm. And then they're like, oh, good. Okay. You, you can uh, meet me in the middle. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Now we can talk, you know, and be very candid. But, oh, good. you know, it, it was a lot of outside influence from the rest of the world during that time too. And, um, you know, and it's all, it's, it's hopefully just shows just how complex something like that might be. And, and, um, and how it's not one thing or another. And, uh, and you know, with the idea of having a, a guy who's done these horrendous things now doing good mm -hmm. uh, and, and genuinely helping people. And I'll sort of even watch those words wash over some of the background cast on set and going, wow, what he's saying is just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, uh, it really educated me uh, in, in in a lot of ways, and, and and felt really privileged that they would let me in, in that, and make make me one of them, and call me brother by the end, and sure. um, and we could do this thing together. Uh, working with the first time director and Alistair, although he's obviously his mentorship with with John Colley, the great John Colley, is a huge mm. plus. Um, but you're both away from your homeland, and and are the two main creative forces on a major film shoot on the other side of the world. What what are your recollections? What's what was the the learning experience that you took from the experience took from the experience really so. yeah i mean so many i mean look i mean we started shooting that when this virus was going on <laughs> i and heard of it yes yeah there's, there's something going on in in china and in and in northern italy and my auntie's in italy and she's she lives there and she's calling me saying um you know oh you know be careful and you know like as a good auntie should and and it's like oh there aren't any cruise ships on the Saba river don't worry about it and Anyway, overnight that all changed and we had to get the next plane out and uh, we were on the last plane out of Belgrade before they shut it down and had tanks going down the street to keep everyone indoors because they don't like being told what to do, yeah. fair enough. So um, wow. we, uh, we we had like a real brothership, brotherhood in all of that. And, um, and then we, you know, like flying back, had to self-isolate here. He stayed with me for two weeks. We had to get permission from the Australian government to get out and go over and shoot it in the height of COVID in the summer, Jeez. which so, and, and, you know, got, so there was, you know, a lot of pressure. People were getting sick. Thankfully everybody recovered. Um, we had to recast. We had to shoot around people's recovery time. Um, Alistair got it. Didn't realize he had it. When we came back next, we were in hotel quarantine, which was really, really hard. Yeah. So, I don't mean we really felt like we went through it, but I think it really added to it. It was just sort of gave us that real, you know, drive. Like when I went back there, it was like, right, we I was almost glad to have the break because so I came back so determined. And um I think Alistair did too and and you know, it, so it was a real I mean, galvanizing beyond. You mentioned the, the the beauty of the city itself and the, the film features some of the, the woodland setting as well. It sounds it looks like through your camera, at least, that you, you fell in love with that part of the world. It, it looks like, a, and I've never been there, so it looks like a fascinating place to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're staying in the old town, and uh, by the end, you, you get to know it. And and I would just walk everywhere, you know, and you're walking past these giant Orthodox churches and going in and checking that out and going, oh, this is quite different to what I've seen before. Or, <laughs> you know, you've got these, you know, huge post office, which is like the most forbidding crazy building I've ever seen, but, you know, get your mail there, you know, and it's still working. Um, you know, parliamentary buildings and then these, you know, kafanas that they have, I mean, which goes back to the Yugoslav days, these places which are meeting places, 
really important socially, mm. particularly for the older generation. It's a place you would drink rakia, you would drink beer, you could eat huge plates of meat. And in the socialist times, you didn't pay. Like you'd go there, you had your voucher for the week, or you know they'd know how many you had, and then you go home, and and then now you have to go and pay with dinner. But like, fascinating, you know? Sounds wonderful. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, yeah, really, really great experience. You've carved an interesting career path for yourself from. MTV VJ to Home and Away to doing Hamlet in four languages in Mexico. Oh my God. <laughs> well, what's the career path plan? It seems to be a, a very a very international focus to it. And what happens next as part of it? Yeah, well, I mean, look, the greatest thing I ever did was was dedicate myself to acting and this craft and and this um and to telling stories and being a part of like you know, didn't think it was the sort of thing I could do until you just do it. And then, you know, it's been a long, long winding process. And uh, I've, like, you know, I had some great experiences. I mean, even, you know, like MTV was great. Got to meet some people and, and you know, excite people about music. And um, and so now being one of the people who, who make films and make you know, part of the art making process is a real yeah. privilege. I mean, personally, like, I spend time here and in the States and I have a story I want to uh get together in um in detroit i've got this i've been spending a bit of time in paris because of my girlfriend's work and uh like enough to speak french because from when i was a kid so i i just start uh, so i've got a story i want to do there so wow. i don't know and then here i mean i i met some great other filmmakers that i'd love to do stuff with and obviously do more with with alistair i mean we've got such a great history of filmmaking in this country and i think what we tried to do is maybe trying to hark back to, you know, crazy old days to how Mad Max was made, you know? And yeah. so we felt like we were part of a great part of Australian cinema history and sort of trying to do something in that, you know, just three blokes, three Aussies in, in Serbia kind of making this crazy movie about, you know, that's set there, you know? So yeah, uh, it's really, it just means a lot when people like you want to, want to talk to me and, and, uh, and really interested and want to, Ask more questions, you know. Oh, I, I'm. I like to think I'm kind of getting on at the ground level of what's going to be a really impressive and exciting career for you, mate. Nathan Clark Sapsford, it's been a, a joy talking to you. You've got a great film already on your resume in Here Be Dragons, which is out through Defiant uh, this week, I believe. So, um, yeah, today, mate, today, Defiant there you go. Score. I'll get this online as soon as we can. So, uh, mate, thank you so much for talking with us, and, and congratulations, and, and hopefully, uh, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Really appreciate it.